Well, we're glad to have everybody here. You're going to really enjoy this one. Uh, we've got our wonderful Judy over here, but Mr. Bill McCarty over here is also going to play a few numbers on his electric guitar a little bit later on, whatever type of thing also. So uh, it's been three years yeah, since she's been here, so whatever type of thing. So we're glad to have her. Because it was out Gene Autry, Oklahoma. We don't get to see her anymore, whatever type of thing. So any further ado, Miss Judy Coder. off a band. Here we go. Yodeling on the mountainside, yodeling on the plain, yodeling like the bird on high, never took no brain. So listen to my crazy song, I'm sure you will admit. The more I yodel this year too, the more you get a bit. places that I wanted to visit that would have me and it was Kansas sesquicentennial year and I went all over the country teaching people how to practice saying sesquicentennial so they'd be ready when it was their turn so and then it's your turn to say sesquicentennial sesquicentennial you've already had yours haven't you <laughs> by golly yeah because it was 1837 1846 46 46 I was see I was giving you some benefit there Yep, then I, uh, then I tell people all about the music that happens in Kansas. And one of the original Dixie Chicks lives just outside of Wichita. She bought the old Bartlett Arboretum, and Robin Macy writes beautiful music, um, because back in the early days, Dixie Chicks didn't do country. They sang Western music, and they sang songs about cowboys, and um, thank heavens for Dale Evans, and they wore hats and boots, and they sang Western music. Isn't she the one they kicked out? Yes, well, they decided that they wanted to make money. And they knew they'd never do that in Western music. And so Natalie said, I won't wear a hat, but I'll make you money. So, no. She's, um, she's really enjoying doing music her way. And Miss Robin wrote this beautiful song that we can all relate to. You know, in that hot time of the year when you have not had rain in a very, very long time, and the only thing that's wet anywhere near you is the back of your neck. And about that time of the day that your hair begins to dry, that's this time of day. The kids are playing in the sand and my hair is nearly dry. So 
supper's on the table, there's promise in the sky. And you're out there on your ginger mill, you're not praying, so I do. It's not so much a prayer for rain as a desperate prayer for you. Dawn As another day goes by, they blow like clouds from heaven, but the devil has to have his way. Thunderheads will bring you to your knees, make you pray for a rainy day. Thunderheads will blow away across the dying sun. So you'll tell me that your heart leans, that your heart leans to the land. I don't need your explanation. I just want to hold your hand. Thunderheads go across the mesa like a heart as a lover's line. dry places in the country these days and uh, they're not all in the south. There's a place in Kansas that enjoys frequent drought out in western Kansas. I have a friend that lives out in Bird City and there's only one Bird City in the United States. We have several Berlins, several Prague's, um, countless garden cities, but there's only one Bird City and there's only one Don Petty. And the first time I met her, she was carrying three instruments in her two little hands, moved, bounding, bounding across a, a festival field. And she has, she's just a delight. Um, she speaks lower than most men that I know. And she has this wild hair and this eternal sandblasted Western Kansas complexion. And um, she is the most gentle soul that you will ever hope to meet and she writes beautiful music. She called me one day and she said, I have this new song I want to throw at you. 
I, you know, mostly I'm a fiddle player, and so this, I don't know what this might sound like to you, and she sang it for me, like this, and uh, she asked me what I thought, I said, Dawn, it's absolutely fabulous, I need another verse, so she wrote me two more, and it became one that got recorded many times, and um, most of the folks in western Kansas now recognize the Liberty Walls. I like to tell folks a little bit of history that they might not know if they didn't grow up in Kansas. In fact, here's a little bit of Kansas history that I didn't really know all the details of when I was growing up in Kansas. And um, so I'll share a little bit of it with you. Um, first of all, Kansas became a state in 1861. Does anyone think of something else that might have started in 1861? Civil War. Most folks think that it started in Fort Sum Sumner, but it didn't. It started many years earlier in Kansas, the state that was actually known as Bleeding Kansas because some of the battles were fought there before the war began. There was a lot of fighting back and forth between the borders of Kansas and Missouri. It didn't start with basketball. It went back much further than that um, when we were just becoming a state. In fact, Kansas was settled in large part by folks that lived back east and wanted politics to go a certain way in Kansas. And um, when we were on our way to becoming a state, actually voting was taking place on both sides of the border. Uh, sometimes the number of votes that were counted were many times the 
actual population of the town in question. And so, um, as you might guess, that there, there were probably some border crossings that were a bit more exciting than others. Uh, in Kansas, well, we had John Brown, and in Missouri, they had Quantrill. And Quantrill qu crossed the border many times and raided the town of Lawrence, not once, but twice. Once before the war and another time during the war. And it was 1863. And actually, um, Quantrill had very specific targets in mind. He knew where he wanted to go. Um, there were active people actively involved in the abolitionist movement, and he knew their names and their addresses. But it was dark, and he was from out of town, and he needed a guide. One night in August, 1863, Missouri rebels rode out west across the dark prairie. It was their plan to get to Lawrence Town. Like devils in the moonlight, they burned farmhouses down. The harvest moon had faded, darkness was too deep. So they took young Jacob Riley from his house on Captain's Creek. He had nothing but a nightshirt, his fate he did foresee. Forced to be their guide that night, he struggled to get free. The town lay calm and slumber, its dimness turned to dawn. He rode downtown to Main Street, and Hadley's men were gone. Montreal's raiders were taking Baldwin's down, shooting unarmed men and burning buildings to the ground. Blood ran cold that day on the banks of the car. God only knows what Jacob Riley saw. The boy who hid in the shadows, blood splattered on his shirt. His innocence was shattered, eyes filled with hurt. Smoke and fire filled the air, cries of fear all around. Jacob was forever scarred, death and all its sounds. The eerie quiet settled in, black smoke hung in the air. Quantrill gave to Riley a new suit of clothes to wear. Gave the boy a horse to ride and touched him on the cheek. Jacob held tight to his horse. Back to Captain's Creek. Quantrill's raiders were taking Lawrence down, shooting unarmed men and burning buildings to the ground. Blood ran cold that day on the banks of the car. God only knows what Jacob Riley saw. Montreal's raiders were taking Lawrence down, shooting unarmed men and burning buildings to the ground. Blood ran cold that day on the banks of the car. God only knows what Jacob Riley saw. God only knows what Jacob Riley saw. Howdy folks, my name is Jim Hawk Powell, and you can usually catch me on Crossroads Live with my good friend and sidekick Sylvia Harrow. But today I'm out here with Danny Boy, out, out here at the Crossroads Ranch. My request is this, have you signed up to be an organ donor? And have you talked this over with your loved ones so that they know your desires? That is a gift that only you and God together can give to those in need. So, till we meet again, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you at the crossroads. Let's go again. There's a, really, a real fondness that I have for the folks that settled the Plains states. Um, there's some of that in my family history. There's probably some of that in yours. And uh, I'm particularly fond of the stories that tell me what it was like for the women helping to settle. Left his supper on the stove. Knowing he was
was on his way. But the sun's gone down and supper's cold. Been gone now five whole days. The cow needs milking, then there's churning. I've been watching. But if he was coming home tonight, he'd be home by now. I seldom worry when he leaves, though now a month has passed. The first blue bonnet's blue. This week, what a pity they don't last. The short grass on the hill is drying. Just today, I started crying. If he was coming home tonight. Coyote must have got my rooster. Daylight came, he never crowed. September found me out of wood. Neighbors came from down the road. And as they rode away, it started snowing. Watch them leaving, finding no that if he was ever coming home, he'd be home by now. There's a man. 
magic spell about her. There's a certain smell about her. Oh, there's nothing you can do. She's in love with her. more yodels just because I'm here and the beautiful Miss Janet McBride is here and I haven't seen her in a very long time a very long time, a very long time. way too too long and how does one yodel on yodeler honor another yodeler well you yodel that's what you do Janet and I met um, a few years back we won't say when Janet and I met I knew one yodeling song. I learned a few. It's true. And I've learned a few since then. She encouraged me. There's a love knot in my lariat, and it's swinging for my little prairie bed. While my ride's a lone prairie, my lariat seems to say, as it twines a crying adult restraint. Oh, there's a love knot in my lariat, and it's swinging for my prairie value bed. While I ride the long prairie, you'll hear my yodel only. There's a love knot in my lariat. I'll be thinking of your ballad round of time as I'm riding across the great divide. For every time I swing my lariat, it takes me to the one I can't forget. Oh, there's a love knot in my lariat, and it's swinging for my little prairie bed. While I ride the range all day, my lariat seems to say, as it twines around an army straight. Oh, there's a love knot in my lariat, and it's swinging for my prairie value bed. While I ride the long prairie, you'll hear my yodel oh, There's a love knot in my lariat. Still 
sad, sad tale of poor Miss Effie. Well, Miss Effie was her name through the West. She won her fame being handy with a gun, but she drove them insane. She'd whip out her pistol and shoot most any guy, then sing out the sound of fire. I didn't know the gun was loaded. Whoops! And I'm so sorry, my friend. I didn't Well, one night she had a date with the wrestling heavyweight, and he tried a brand new hold she did not appreciate. She whipped out her pistol and shot him in the knee. Then quickly she sang this plea. I didn't know the gun was loaded, and I'm so sorry, my friend. I didn't know the gun was loaded, and I'll never, never do Now one night she made a slip, shot the sheriff in the hip, and the law took a hand, made Miss Effie take the stand. She fed on your honor, I know you'll turn me loose when you hear my one excuse. I didn't know the gun was loaded, and I'm so sorry, my friend. I didn't know the gun was loaded, and I'll never, never do it. 
Well, the jury all agreed that Miss Effie should be freed, but the sheriff jealous was indignant, yes indeed. She borrowed a pistol and shot that village bell and sang as Miss Effie fell. I didn't know the gun was loaded and I'm so sorry, my friend, everybody. I didn't know the gun was loaded and I'll never, never do it. keep more water in the air here than we do back home. I mean, we keep some, but I mean, wow. Wow. Just lucky, I guess. Just lucky, I guess. You, you don't have to keep it all in the air. Yeah, well, I know you're working on that. You know, a few years ago when we were visiting family here, I have my family here, my mother, Barbara Harris, my sister Nancy. Yes, and granddaughter Cheyenne, yes. And sometimes when we come to visit, we like to do a little bit of sightseeing, you know. And a few years ago, we went to see the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. And um, I have a feeling I could never go often enough. And so this is, this is one of those Cowgirl Hall of Fame type songs. My kids all call me Granny, but honey, they don't know be a cowgirl in the big rodeo show. I was pumping those barrels and roping all them steers. Riding on my pony, his name was Belvedere. Hanging with old Charlie, the rodeo clown. Traveling together, going from town to town. They once made a postcard with my picture and my name. Now my stars are shining in the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. Rockin' chair will never hold me back. Silver buckle, silver crown, and my old cowboy boots. A cowgirl's heart is something you don't lose. That worn out leather saddle there, a hanging on the rack. It's where this little missy's worn out bottom sat. My fringed buckskin jacket, it hangs there with great pride. Back in the old days, boy, this gal could ride. Along with the great and mighty buck and bronze. Folks at the rodeo, you know they would cheer for us. I still saddle up my pony and take her for a whirl. Cause you're never too old to be a real cowgirl. Silver spurred, silver care, and my black Stetson hat. Well, that old rocking chair will never hold me back. Silver buckle, silver crown, and my old cowboy boots. A cowgirl's heart is something you don't lose. A cowgirl's heart is something you don't lose. Thank you for having me here at Dallas. I hope I don't have to wait so long before coming back the next time. I'll close with a special song that I want to sing for Cheyenne. She's my yodeling cowgirl queen, and this is called Cowboy Yodel. There's a cowboy that I know riding in the rodeo. He's a fella that I'm the fondest of. I love him and he loves me, and that's the way it ought to be. But he drives me crazy when we're making love. Cause he always starts to yodel Oh, do 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 He starts in to yodel Oh, do 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 He was squeezing me one night While the moon was shining bright And I know that I was under his spell He was gazing in my eyes And I was breathing pretty sighs Then like Tarzan he let out 
and my handsome cowboy wore a buckskin coat. When the parson said, would you promise all but to be true? My lover smiled and gently cleared his throat. He started into yodel. Today, I'm out here with my pal, Danny Boy, and we have a message for you from the American Lung Association. If you don't smoke, don't start. And if you do smoke, find a way to stop. Now, we know that it's not easy, so check with your doctor. He'll be the first one who'll be glad to help show you the way. Now, for a better quality of life and a longer life, stop smoking today. So, for me and Danny, to all of you, good luck, God bless, and here's hoping we see you at the crossroads. And welcome back to Crossroads Live. My name is Jim Hoffpower, and we are at the Gene Autry Dallas Lunch Group at El Phoenix. We've just got through watching a wonderful show with this lady. You gotta help me with your last name. It's Judy Coder. 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 Am I saying it correct? Okay, I'll get that right. Judy Coder. So Judy, since we've never met before, I'm gonna ask you, where's home? Home is Topeka, Kansas. Topeka, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And you've been on tour? I've been on tour off and on uh for about three months now. Three months. Mm -hmm. I get stopped by home once in a while and check in. Check in. Mm -hmm. Do they know you? Yes, they do. They do? Okay. Mm -hmm. So where have you been traveling to? Where is Well, I've been performing with a band from Washington State. Ah, and we've been performing quite a bit. We had some performances in Washington and in Canada. How does Canada handle the yodeling? I mean, do they? Are they? they love it. They love it up in mm -hmm. Canada. Yeah. Well, I notice that uh, more and more people I'm around are yodelers. And oh, it depends on the company you keep, you know. You well, uh, I've the met Gene them all through this group. Here. Well, that explains a lot. That, that explains a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been performing? How many years? Well, I've been performing since I was a very little girl, but my first public yodel was November of 1998. Remember it like it was yesterday? Uh, absolutely. It feels like yesterday. Does it? Mm hmm So, what inspired you? I asked somebody this one time, and they looked at me like I was lost it. I said, when did you find out you could yodel? How, how did that? I didn't know that I could yodel. I had a father-in-law that decided that um, I should try it. He was the MC for a country music show up in our neck of the woods. And um, he said to me one day, after I'd been married to his middle son a couple of years, he knew my voice very well, and he said, you know, we used to have such good yodelers on the Opry show, and I think you ought to yodel because I think you'd be good at it. And I looked at him like he had three heads. Yeah. But he's one of those people that just doesn't understand the word no. And so from then on, every time I saw him, his question to me was not, have you decided to yodel? It was, what song will you be yodeling for us in November? And so he kept giving me recordings, and I was to pick one. And I chose Patsy Montana's I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart. That and is a very popular song. That was a good choice. Yeah. I would jokingly, with some friends of mine, mm -hmm. uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, you know Buck Helton? Yes. Okay. Buck's a buddy of mine. Okay. He lives out in Arizona now, you know. Yeah. And so anyway, I was joking with him on the phone the other night, and I told him, I got a great idea for 
a, a song that you ought to think about writing because you know not have him write it because he's a good songwriter yeah and i said you know you know that song about i want to be a cow girl a cowboy sweetheart uh, da, da, da. i said they ought to write a, a guy's version of it uh -huh. i want to be a cowgirl fella you know uh -huh. i want to learn to rope and ride have a riding by my side you know you already been writing it why don't you go ahead and finish <laughs> Well, I'm not a singer, and uh, I don't yodel, and uh, you know. And I thought, well, Buck could do a great job on that. You uh -huh. know, I, you know, to finish it up, you know. And I want to learn. I learned to play a guitar and sing a cowboy song, and learn to ride with my baby as we yodel along, stuff like that. See, you're a perfect songwriter. You just need somebody to cover your work. There it is. <laughs> wow, I got a new career. You know. And, you know, in fact, I, I co-wrote sort of like that. Uh -huh. I, I wrote the words, and this guy took it and put the music in there you go. cleaned it up. Yeah. I didn't recognize the song when it was finished. Well, that's what we do. Oh. <laughs> so what did Buck say when you asked him to write this song? And so I, I told him the idea of it, and I told him the words, and he said, I love it. And his name is Billy Jack Davis, and he's a local artist. And so, and, and it was called A Cowboy Through and Through. Yeah. So I gave him the words to it. He took it, ran with it. Yeah. He's getting ready to put it on. We used it in a movie. Used yeah. it, it was used in a movie. And now he's getting to put it on his album. Ah. And he called me the other day and let me know he was going to put this on an album. Yeah. And I went, I'm honored. Yeah. I'm honored. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not looking for a payday on this. I'm just like, I'm honored just to have my name on, be on a record, yeah. you know, on, so, and uh, so anyway, but anyway, you have albums out? Yes. Uh, the Christmas album I put out last fall was number 10. Wow. Number 10 album. Well, no, it was the 10th album I did. Oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to Bear with me on this. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you this. How can the folks out there who are watching get your album? Well, that's real easy. You can go to judycoder.com and follow the instructions to merchandise. My CDs are sold through CD Baby online, and you oh, just yeah. follow the oh, links. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you can go to cdbaby.com and type in Judy Coder. Either one. Sounds simple to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I want it to be easy to send yeah, me mine. Well, yeah, it's got to be easy for guys yeah. like me who are not so technical. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But anyway, so where's next? Where, where are you headed to? Coffeeville, Kansas. Coffeeville and Fort Scott. Wasn't there a big bank robbery there once? There was a huge bank robbery. Oh, anyway, tell us about it. Well, actually, it was not very successful. That's what I heard. Yes. The Dalton boys decided that they were going to outdo the James gang, and they, and they came through and tried to rob two banks at the same time. Yes. And the town folks saw them coming, and uh, they were ready for them when they came out of the bank, and it did not end well for the Dalton boys. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a nice museum there where you can stand where they fell and... Yeah. <laughs> really? Do they have reenactments of that? Um, I know that they used to. I don't know whether they still do or not. At certain times of the year, it would be fun to find out. Because I know they still do reenactments of Wyatt Earp thing out there. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And what is that? To what was to it? Tombstone. Tombstone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I've heard. I, I see pictures. I got friends of mine that will show me pictures that I was here and uh, uh, with the reenactment group and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. fun. That's fun. Mm -hmm. So, do you get a lot of bookings? Where's your most bookings at? In uh, mostly in the Southwest. Um, I, it's wherever they'll pay me, right? Right. Um, I go out. I go to Albuquerque once a year, and uh, now that I am performing with Horse Crazy Cowgirl Band, out of Washington State, we perform quite a bit in Washington and in Canada. And the uh, Laura Lee Northcott is, is in charge it an of that. All band? It is an all cowgirl band. Wow. Yeah. Well, I like that. I mm -hmm. like girls. Well, I mean, well, well women. I so mean, not. You know, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's a good thing. It's mm -hmm. a good thing. There's a lot well, to learn. listen, I want to thank you for taking a little time to be with us here on Crossroads. Well, thank and you. And thank you for a great performance. I love the way you were able to give, put the history in with the music. Yeah. And so that was wonderful. You do a great job. Thank you. got you. a wonderful voice. And uh, one of these days I'm going to learn to yodel. I'll write that song. Yes. Yes.
Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you very much. And we'll be back on Crossroads Live soon. Till we meet again, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you at the Crossroads. Let's go, Dan.